Hi, my name is Sharon Tao. I'm the founder of Melbourne Kinesiology and Detox Center. I'm a kinesiologist, spiritual healer, and a Reiki master and teacher. I hold a diploma of kinesiology, and currently I'm completing my diploma in counseling. We're here today in Byron Bay, New South Wales, and the last clip that we showed was about identity and are you following your full identity. What I would like to discuss now is fear and the seven distortion away that takes you away from your identity. Fear is the opposite of love. And as we have discussed this in the last clip, and if you haven't watched it, go now and watch it quickly so you'll know what we're about to talk about. And basically, fear is the opposite of love. And love is our identity. This is who we are. When we function out of love, we are one with the Creator. We are one with our essence. We are one with our soul. So with the presence of fear in our life, it pushes away the love. And when your love is being pushed away, all kinds of blockages and distortion are coming through to confuse you from finding your true essence. Today I would like to discuss seven of them, or the seven major ones. We chose really to connect to this amazing space in nature just to connect us to who we are and what we are. Because nature has no fear. Nature is just doing what it needs to do. It's the mankind that comes and shapes it to its own benefit. But if we go bush, if we go wild, if we go into the real nature, the untouched nature, we can see that it lives in perfect harmony and it is perfect within all the imperfection. And that is where we need to allow ourselves to accept ourselves fully. Distortion number one. Dominance by external power or external energy versus being in line with your own true essence. And that matter usually will go for young children. Or now we are older, when we were young. Sometimes the only way that our parents or people around us knew how to control us was to dominate us. Whether it was via the belt, via hitting, via yelling, via screaming, via frightening. You just wait until dad will come home and see what will happen. We were not taught out of love. Not all of us, God forbid. We were taught out of fear. Hence, our building blocks, and it's not necessarily parents. It could be siblings. It could be friends. It could be now peers at work. It could be many, many layers, but they have come from our building blocks. So if a family has a lot of children and they don't have the ability to control each and every one, there has to be a system of punishment, of control, of ruling and making the dominance and to save time and effort. So basically, when we are being dominance, we are being controlled via fear in order to be ruled. This is the opposite of allowing our self-discovery and growth and finding out what is right and what is wrong in our life. So we need to allow ourselves to follow our essence. So even maybe if now it goes back to the second generation and we may do the same action with our children or with our young one or with our pets, how do we express it to them? Are we allowing them to explore their essence? Or are we trying to dominate them? Are we coming out of love or out of fear? 
Are the actions that we are doing right here, right now, are they coming out of fear or out of love? Sometimes partners will say, oh, I'd better clean that quickly, or I'd better hide this so that my partner won't see that, and oh my God, what will happen? That is as well the fear that we will be dominant because we know that we're doing something that it's against those rules, but it's something that may we wanted to do. So rule number one, being dominant by external forces or working in line with our true essence. The second distortion in the blockages for love is feeling unsafe and insecure versus feeling safe and secure. When you're safe and secure, there is love. When you're feeling unsafe and insecure, is it love or is it fear? Sometimes you don't know what you're coming home to. Home should be your safe place. Is it safe? Is it secure? One of the biggest problem with abuse, verbal, mental, physical, sexual, is that you don't know where you're coming to. So you're living in fear. You don't live with love, with safety, with security. I would like to pray that my daughter, who is nine, will always feel safe to come home and always feel secure to tell me everything and anything because there will be unconditional love. And if there has done something wrong, we can talk about it. We can try to find a way. We'll find the reason why did it happen? How can we change it? What can we do about it? But with love and not via fear, not via violence or upset or cold war. That doesn't help anything. That doesn't help the person to feel safe or secure. And that's why some people who are being bashed, who are being beaten, who are being many different reasons, going to a shelter because the shelter should be safe and secure. So is your home is a shelter? Is your home is a safe base? Or is there fear there that will distort you from who you are and what you are? This is so strong. This is so powerful. Abraham Maslow with his hierarch of needs of a person. One of the basic ones, the person needs to feel safe and secure. So do you feel safe at your own home? I hope so. The third stage of the distortion that comes from fear, that takes you away from your identity, is self-worth and self-care versus lack of self-worth and vanity. So after that you are dominant, you are lacking your safety and security, comes the illusion, delusion, challenge on self-worth. Who am I? What am I? Where do I get enough? Is that enough for me or am I worthy of the best? Oh no, well, at least I have this or at least I have that. We're looking at things, it's not from gratitude, it's from fear. And on the other spectrum of the same thing, we have the vanity. When I'll have this, when I have injecting my, my this or injecting my that, I will look pretty, I will be this. We are compromising who we are and what we are if it comes from the fear and the lack of self-worth. So only when your breast will be larger or smaller you'll look pretty. Only when you'll shed 2 kilo, 5 kilo, 10 kilo, 20 kilos you'll be pretty. No, you're pretty as you are. You're beautiful as you are. When you're coming from love, when you're coming from self-worth, 
you want to put makeup, put it on, but not in order to impress anyone else. We'd like to do a facial, it's fantastic, it's perfect. That is self-care. You want to go and do your hair, you want to go and do your nails, you can still do everything that you do within the beauty industry, but your essence needs to come out of love. I love having my nails done. However, I'm doing it for me. And if people comment about it or not, lovely. I love having purple in my hair. Is it for other people or to get their approval? No, it's for me because I love it. So when I look in the mirror, I'm saying, gee, you look good today. Maybe I'm delusional, maybe not. But this is my self-love for myself. I will not, or I will do my best not to go and do something just for the sake of vanity. For the sake of lack of self-worth and self-love. Does that make sense to you? If you want to go to the gym, go and exercise. It is good, it is healthy. When it is in moderation and according to what your body needs, with your cardiovascular, with the training, with the weights, with the minerals and vitamin, with the right foods and the right hydration. So go and do what it is that you need to do for your own self-care, for your own body, maintenance. But just to go in order to pump muscle to try and look good in this or in that, that defeats the purpose of doing it for yourself. If you would like to have something, do it for yourself. Again, not the other extreme of narcissism and it's only me, 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 me. No, but it is out of love. What about me? What are my needs? What will make me feel good about myself? So if it is to shed a few more kilos, go for it. Shed them. But if it's just that you'll be able to reach from this point in your head and still won't be satisfied. So when I have clients come to me and they say, oh, I need to shed another two, three kilos. And I say, and that's when you will be happy? Will you be satisfied? What does your body really want from you? And that is where with kinesiology we check the ideal weight and we check what is it that your really body would like you to be and where are you now in relation to that. Okay, so sometimes your perception of what it is that needs to be comes from distortion in your self-worth and your need for vanity in order to satisfy and to please someone else. So I ask you, stop. Feel it within your heart. What is the right thing for you? It is about you. I hope that that makes sense for you. So that is the third stage of distortion in your identity. The fourth stage of distortion within the fear versus the identity of the love is doubt versus knowing. There are certain things that we know, we know, we know them, we own them. But then other people may come and project their fears on us and make us doubt who we are, what we are, what we want, whether it's versus the guilt, whether it's versus upset, whether it's versus any negative emotion that they will think of to put their opinion on us. So what is it that you know that you can express yourself, just like that bird that we hear? And you know it. I know that I'm a light worker. I know that I'm coming from the right space in my heart. I may make mistakes, of course, we all do. But my intent is pure. My intent is positive. And when you're coming from your heart, you really can't go wrong. And if you do, you just change it. But when other people start to plant the seed of doubt in you, then you're really not sure what to do or how to do. In the Jewish religion, the doubt is equal to the snake. 
And the snake in paradise started, hmm, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? But I know that I'm not supposed to do that. Oh, but why don't you anyway just do it? Take you around it and do this. And planted the seed of doubt that then was the, we lost the paradise. But have we, can we bring it back? Can we bring our knowing to do that? Can we bring our truth? It doesn't mean that it suits someone else, but it is my truth. If I know that I am a good person and a good therapist and a good mother, not necessarily in any of this order, but I'm coming from the right place, why will I let anyone else doubt it? If I've got the evidence base of everything that I have mentioned, I know that I am a good person. Do you know that you are a good person? Do you know that your heart comes from a space of light? You have to remember that. Don't let anyone plant the seed of doubt if you're good or not good. If you yourself have questions or doubt internally about yourself, stop. Verify it. Stick to the facts. Doubt often distort you from the facts. But when you have the facts, you have knowing. The biggest debate between science and spirituality is the knowing. Do you have a proof? And with kinesiology, we have more and more scientific proofs to show that it is real. Hence, we have a knowing. There is no doubt. There is a knowing. So what are your knowing? What is it that you know in your life about you? So I would like you to stop and have a think about it. What do you know in your life that is good for you? And if you know that certain things are not good for you and you know it, and whether it will be substance abuse or whether it will be excess addictions or whether it will be talking bad about yourself, stop. Stop. Change it. Say, why am I doing it? What am I missing? Which stage am I lacking? And move to the knowing. And once that you're doing this, move to the next stage. So that is stage four. Doubt versus knowing. The fifth stage of distortion of fear from our true identity is shame and blame versus pride and taking responsibility. So many things has been said about the shame and the blame. And as my Kumu Brenda from Hawaii says, this is out of fashion. No more needs to shame and blame, as well with fear and guilt. But basically, shame and blame, what good do they give you? Do they make you feel good about yourself? I don't think so. Because when you're ashamed or you're feeling you have you have you're blaming someone else, are you really owning what it is? Do you love yourself? You're in shame. You're in hiding. How many people have shame about their expression, about their sexual expression, about their personal expression, about their opinion, about what they want to be or how they want things to be done. There is so much shame inside the bedroom. Why? Why can't it be natural and happy and joyful? On the other hand, when we blame other people, oh, I couldn't do this because of da 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 or this has been done to me, how could he or she do that to me? 
I'm the victim. It's not because of me. It's because the dog ate my homework, right? Well, no. First of all, be proud. Have pride in who you are and what you are. There is no shame. When you are taking responsibility for everything that you do and that has been done to you, you can be proud of who you are and what you are. If you're not feeling pride, change it. Nothing is stopping you from changing who you are and what you are or how things are, is there? No, it's up to you. So are you now taking responsibility? Can you see how taking responsibility and being proud of who you are and what you are encourages your identity of love? So I'm a light worker. What are you? I love laughing and having fun and singing and dancing and walking on the beach, having fun. That's not too much drama. But for me, that's what does it to me. I'm proud of who I am and what I am. And when I'm not, I'm checking out why aren't you proud of yourself? Why are you being so hard on yourself? Go back to the love space. Don't come out of fear. How will I be able to be all the time proud, happy, full of gratitude and definitely taking responsibility for myself? As well, some people like to say that you should be ashamed from God. Let me tell you something. God is love. God is not fear. You're supposed to love God. And love it with passion because God is one, is love. God is not fear. And the fear of judgment day, when you take responsibility, then you go to judgment day and say, well, this is what I've done, this is what happened, and I am taking responsibility. If you broke something, you either need to replace it or to buy it again or to clean the mess, but you take responsibility. Whatever the consequences will be, you take responsibility. But to be put down for it, to be hurt, to be hiding, to be ashamed of it, I stuffed up. I am really sorry I stuffed up. How can I fix it? Can it be fixed? Can it be replaced? Can I do something about it? No guilt, blame, shame will work here because it is gone, finish. Does that make sense? It takes you out of the love, puts you into the fear, the fear of consequences. You just wait. I'll tell dad. You wait and see what will happen to you. That is being under the fear section and not the love. Okay, so no more blame and shame, but be proud and take responsibility. The sixth stage of distortion from the love for your identity is control. It is being controlled versus self-control. So being controlled is following other person's advice without being aware of what is it that you want. We are being controlled by our addictions. We are being controlled by some people that can manipulate and distort us. It's not necessarily being dominated by them, but it's being controlled. Controlled is a milder version of that, but control is coming when we don't have our self-control. Control can be, it mainly will be for me with the explanation for addictions. So some people will say, oh, I can control my diet, but if you'll bring me a cream cake, I have no self-control when it comes to do with sugar. Or I have no self-control when it comes with, with some form of addiction or an addictive thing. 
It doesn't really matter what the substance is, but it's the fact that we are being controlled by it. So the point in that is to achieve your self-control, which is really the sister of self-responsibility. And when we are doing this, we are all connected to our true essence of love. Because if I'm in control and I know that eating five fast foods in one meal is really not going to do good for myself, then I'll stop. If you're really hungry and there's no other food, take it in, in, in little bit by little bit in consideration. Don't be consumed by anything. Don't allow things to take over you. And that is where you're always in control. So if people offering you another drink and another, oh, just take another drink. Sometimes I have clients that in a party, they can have 20 drinks of alcohol. How, I wonder, how, where? Mind you, they're only enjoying the first three or four. Afterwards, they can't really remember much. But that's okay because we can drink and we'll drink as much as we can. 20 drinks. Well done, I say. Do I? But if you need to drink that and you can still be in self-control, by all means, do that. There is no problem with what you do or how you do as long as you are in self-control. Because you know your identity and you connect it to the love. When you're out of self-control, when you're being controlled by someone or something, one of the reasons that I will not smoke is because the cigarettes or the cigars are stronger than me. I am. I like my control. Hence, I would not be controlled by that. Because sadly, it's an addictive substance. So for me, in order to stay in self-control, I'd rather not touch it at all. Forget the fact whether it's healthy or not. It's the fact that it is stronger than me. So this is in relation to control, in control, and the lack of it. The seventh stage of the distortion is guilt versus free. So when you have guilt about things, can you be free? Are you free? No. Any guilt that may be there for you will take away your freedom, will take away your passion, will take away who you are and what you are. Why does people feel guilty? What do they feel guilty about? Could it be a result of all the other stages of distortion? Could it be out of fear? If they have someone did something, they wanted to do it. They may feel guilty after because it doesn't suit the norm. It doesn't suit, they may get emotional blackmail from it. I say, be free, come from love. And then there'll be no guilt. When you're doing something with clean heart, there'll be no guilt, there'll be no shame, there'll be no fear. So there's not too much even to say about this stage beside of connect to your freedom. So in summary of the seven stages and connecting or reconnecting to your identity to love, I would love to recommend to you to sit and meditate. Pause every stage of the clip that you have just seen and try to reflect back. Where are you? Are you in the fear spectrum? Are you in the love spectrum? Are you somewhere in the middle? I highly recommend take away the fear, connect to the love, connect to your true essence, connect to what it is that you would like to do in this lifetime. In this lifetime, you only live once. 
So what is your essence? Where do you connect the love? Take away the seven stages of distortion of fear and reconnect it to love. You'll be free. You'll be in control. You'll be proud. You will have responsibility. You will have the knowing. You will be beautifully worthy of yourself. You will have security. And you will be in the total connection and essence of who you are and what you are. I want to wish you all the best and lots and lots of love and joy. Thank you.